Good morning, Bowie City Church. Good morning. I'm glad you are here to worship with us this morning, and hopefully uh, you have enjoyed service this far. Hopefully you have enjoyed your weekend this far. Uh, if not, hopefully you'll be encouraged by being here. Hopefully the worship encourages you. Hopefully it uplifts you. Um, hopefully this sermon will uplift you as well. Uh, I'm just glad you're here to worship with us. You could have gone anywhere, but you decided to be here with us, and we, we thank you for coming, and we thank God for bringing you here. We are in the third part of our series entitled Jonah, uh, and Jonah is, we all know about Jonah. If you don't, that's the story about jo- the guy who got swallowed by a fish or a whale. Haven't seen it. There's a VeggieTales version I've I mentioned before. Uh, it's not really what happened, but it's, it gives the idea of what happened with Jonah. So we are in the third week of it, and I kind of picking up from where Jason left off in chapter two. We're going to move on to chapter three and see what happens in Jonah's life. So we said in the first week, if you haven't, if you weren't here, if you haven't heard the sermon, you can go to our, our website and listen to it. You can download it, or you can go to our YouTube page, and you also can see the sermon there. Uh, Bowie City Church is our channel. But the first week, we, we said that Jonah is a reluctant prophet, and Jonah was a prophet that was running from God. And we all have in us parts and times where we have run from God. In some situation, some place in our life, we have decided to run, and that God is trying to get us to stop running. We, God has called us to go somewhere to do something, and sometimes we run away from what God's calling us to do. That's like Jonah. He went a total opposite direction because he did not want to reach out to Nineveh, to, this, to this, the, the Syrians there. He, he couldn't stand them and gave reasons why. And last week, Jason thought was he, he wasn't just running from God. He was, he was unrepentant as well, and that we are to live a repentant life to stop, stop doing what we're not supposed to do and move, move towards Christ and move toward God's standard for us and to turn away from the thing that separates us. And we saw how Jonah was willing to just be thrown off the ship and cast lots, and he was doing everything he could not to be repentant and that Jason was calling us to live a repentant life. And so now we're in the story where Jonah is now in the water and we're doing our old school versus new school kind of thing here. So we got the flannel graph, you know, back in VBS or back in, you know, when I was in Sunday school, this is what we had. And we all wanted to be the kid who got to put up the flannel graph pieces. If you got to do that, you were the cool kid of the, of the Sunday school class that day. And so this is Jonas where he picked up. He's in the water and we have this well that's coming after him. And this well is, or this fish is not Jonah in the well, but in the Bible calls it a fish. This fish this well is actually Jonah's deliverance. It may not seem that way, but it is. It's his deliverance. And so we wanted to give you like a, a little better view of what it could have looked like, what Jonah saw coming to him when he was in the water. So we're going to take this away, and then my buddy Jason is going to come help me show what it might have looked like, because uh, Jason is an art, artiste. It's kind of, it's, it's extreme flannel graph right now. This is, this is a... Uh, this is way beyond than what came with the pieces, but this is what Jonah could have seen while he's in the water, thinking he is going to drown, thinking this is it, I'm running from God, I would rather do this, and, uh, and then he sees this coming after him. So we have some, um, we got some, well, we got some teeth. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh, we need more lean. Lean back, Jonah, lean back. We need some lean. And a tongue. If you, any, any uh, elementary school teachers, if you need Jason to do some artwork for you, this is, this is all his doing. There's, jo- there's Jonah. There you go. Get it for Jason. He put this all together. Yeah. This did not come in the pack. He sat at home and, like, cut this out. Uh, and so... Um, Take your, take, this is all, this is Twitter worthy. This is Instagram worthy. Uh, give credit to Jason Craig. We did not do this, but this is what Jonah saw. He saw this whale, this fish, and it, it literally ate him. It literally, well, it swallowed him. It didn't eat him, but it swallowed him. And this is Jonah's deliverance. It may not seem that way. It may not feel that way, but this is actually Jonah's deliverance. A big fish comes and swallows him. And what's crazy about this, and I, church, I'm going to be honest with you, while I'm worshiping, I feel like God was calling, telling me to do, kind of like, just go where I'm telling you to go, maybe more so off my notes than, than what I prepared. But Jonah, Jonah was willing to die 
for the fishermen, for the seamen that threw him overboard. You guys remember the boat? Where did it go? There it is. Remember these dudes? These guys on the boat? Jonah was willing to die for these guys who God did not call him to rather than die for the people he called him to. Jonah told them to throw him, hey, to, to save your life, throw me into the water. I'll, I'll die for you guys. I'll, I'll die for you, but I won't die for, for Nineveh, who God's called me to. And church, I, as, as I was preparing this last night and even during worship, I feel like God was saying, who are we giving our lives to instead of who God's called us to? A lot of times we give our best. We will give our lives to our work. We'll give our lives to the pursuit of, of things. We will give our lives to the pursuit of other things besides what God has called us to, which if you don't know, it's your family. First and foremost, if you don't know, you're called to preach the gospel to all nations, all of us, not just Pastor Dion, not just Jason, but all of us are to preach the gospel and to make disciples. If you don't know that, that's, that's all right. We can teach you that. But you are called to reach your family and to love your family and not to, to give your worst to your family, but to give your best to your family, give your best to your household, to give your best to God. Yet we were willing to die and give up other things for other people yet to what God has called us to. And this is where Jonah is. Jonah's like, I'd rather die than go to Nineveh. I'd rather just drown instead of going to Nineveh. But this whale, this fish, is Jonah's deliverance. And there's some circumstance that might come your way that is now or has been your deliverance. As you are running away, as you're doing everything possible to do opposite what God's doing, he says, you know what? I'm going to cause a situation to happen that's actually going to save you from your downfall. And this is what God decides to do. With Jonah. So in Jonah chapter 2, verse 1, it says, it says, we're going to see what Jonah starts to say when he's inside this fish, inside this well. He says, from inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. Look, we might choose a really nice and quiet place when it's time for us to pray. When you get to pray, maybe you pray on your way to work. Maybe you pray in the shower. Maybe you pray uh, when everything's quiet. You find a nice place. Well, Jonah finally has a nice place to pray, but it's not really nice. It's, it's in the belly of a fish. But God finally has Jonah's attention. God finally has Jonah by himself. He's finally in a place where he can hear God, and he comes to understanding where he finally is. And a lot of times we get that when we're in prayer. Sometimes I know when I'm in prayer, sometimes I'm praying to God, and the circumstances I'm in comes crystal clear. And like, oh, as Jason says, oh, my dang. I get that from Jason Craig. Oh, my dang. Oh, my gosh. God, where am I? What has happened? And this is where Jonah's at. We, how could Jonah, in this prayer, if you read it, if you did your homework, like we asked you to do in the beginning of the month, is that you read the whole book of Jonah's four chapters. If you read it, you will understand that Jonah, is, is in this prayer, seems so calm. He seems so like, like he's not shouting. He's not like screaming like, God, save me. He has this very calm prayer that he's praying. It became apparent that God had other plans for Jonah. He wasn't going to be eaten. You know, he was swallowed. Like the well could have, depending on the well, we don't know what kind of well or fish it was, but could have chewed him up like, like done. But fish normally, not like sharks, but normally they just swallow what they're eating whole. So Jonah could have been eaten. He wasn't. Jonah was in this well, in this fish, to learn a valuable lesson, to learn something through his circumstances for three days he had to learn from his circumstances of what happened. And we may feel that we're, be, we're being swallowed up by our circumstances sometimes, either right now or in the past or maybe in the future, that your circumstances will come to you and you feel like they're swallowing you up. But we can have assurance that what God brings to us will always be for our good and for his glory. For those of us who are in Christ, all things work together for his good and for our good. And so even when circumstances seem to be craziness, like a fish swallowing, like I was drowning and a fish swallowing, that's just crazy circumstances, guys. Like, I got you. It's for, it's going to work for my will. It's going to work for your benefit. Trust in me. Trust in what I'm doing. Stop running from me. Go towards what I'm calling you to go. This is what Jonah is learning. Jonah knew that in his plight, it was his fault. Jonah knew where he was, what he was in was his fault, his own doing. Yet we find what Jonah prays to the Lord, and God responds to Jonah. God responds to Jonah in his honest and brief prayer. Often, ours are not as honest as Jonah. We, we tend to overlook the real issues 
that are, that are happening in our lives. We tend to overlook the sin that's caused us to be in this. Sometimes we, we go into, how would I get here? It's so-and-so's fault and this is so-and-so's fault. And I understand sometimes we, can't, we don't even look at our own circumstance, our own reason, our own doing, saying, it's, I did this. I'm here because I chose to do opposite of what God's called. I chose to live outside of God's will. I chose to live outside of his word. And I'm in this circumstance because of my doing. A lot of times we like to pass blame onto others. Maybe not you guys in the room, maybe because you guys are really good and close to being as holy as holy. But I know for me, I can blame other people and other circumstances of why I'm in the place that I'm in. Jonah here, he does it. He comes to terms. He comes to grips with reality. Like, oh, this is my own doing. This is my undoing. Summarizing his prayer, Jonah, he answers in a way that he couldn't possibly have anticipated. Jonah states that he's found himself in verse 2 in the, in, deep, in the deep realm of death. In the deep realm of death. Uh, if, we go, if we go to Jonah's prayer, uh, the deep, deep realm of death, it says this in Jonah, Jonah 2, uh, verse, verse 2. Chapter 2, verse 2 says, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You listened to my cry. This into the depths, into the deep, into the depths, this word in the Old Testament is called shehold. Everyone say shehold. Okay, okay, try this again. Everyone say shehold. Okay, that means death. It, it means death. You're learning a little Hebrew here, but it, it means death. So literally, Jonah says, I was, I'm facing death. I'm certainly going to die. In the realms of my death, God, you heard me. The shoe hills, a condition of death. Jonah's admitting that he is good as dead. Dead as a doornail. You guys heard that term before? Like, one more whack, and it's over. It's, it's done. Like, the nail's in. Nail in the coffin. But God reached out and rescued him. Some of us in our testimony, we can say, God reached out and rescued me. I was facing death. I was facing being separate from you, God. I was facing eternal death. I was facing physical death. I was facing spiritual death, financial death, relationship death. But God, you reached out and you rescued me. You rescued me from my circumstances, God. You rescued me from my my own undoing of of my life. And so Jonah's next acknowledgement is God's providence in verse 3. Verse 3 says this, you hurled me into the depths and into the very heart of the sea. And the currents twirled, twirled about me, and all your waves and breakers swept over me. And when everyone in your Bible, in your, in your Bible app, or in your own Bible, uh, to underline or mentally underline the word your, you or your, Jonah knows that it wasn't chance, it wasn't by circumstance, it wasn't by luck, it wasn't blind faith that caused him to be in this dilemma. Neither does he blame the sailors that threw him overboard. He doesn't, he doesn't blame these guys for throwing him overboard because Jonah told him to throw him overboard. And they said, no, let's not do that. And then eventually they're like, okay, God, we have this man. Like, don't, don't, don't put his blood on our hands. And they threw him overboard. And we know, like, the wave stopped and Jonah started to drown. He doesn't blame the sailors. They were just used, merely an instrument used for God, for merely to, to discipline God and bring, to discipline Jonah and bring him to restoration. Jonah understands that his deliverance has been directed by God's hands. Understand, like, picture this. You are, anybody, like, ever felt like they were going to drown before? Everybody ever felt like, like, if I don't, one more, one more, like, if I don't get to that wall, if somebody doesn't throw me a ring, if somebody doesn't do something for me, I am going to drown. I've been there. I've had, I have asthma. I had really bad asthma as a kid, and I had instances that I couldn't breathe, and I felt like, this is it. Like, if I don't get a breath soon, this is a wrap. Like, I, I, this, is, this is over. This is Jonah sinking at the bottom. Like, he is literally sinking in the sea, in a Mediterranean sea, sinking, 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 sinking. This is it. This is it. And all, out of nowhere, here comes this fish and swallows him. Jonah, knowing who God is, says, this is not by accident. This is not by circumstance. This is, like... God did this because I should be dead. I should not even have a hope, a chance in the world. I should be, and God sends this fish. And so when he's inside a fish, he realizes like, this is only God. This is only, I've heard people say this. I've heard, especially those who are spiritually mature, I've heard them say this before, like only but God. 
but God. It's only because of him that, that I'm here. It's only because of him that I'm out of circumstance. Even when I thought there was no way out, it's only but God sent this fish, and now he's saying, God, you rescued me. God, you saved me. He says this in verse 4, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look, to, I will look again towards your holy temple. The word sight here in verse 4 can also be looked as, translated as favor. He says, God, I, I've been banished from your favor. I've been, I've been banished from your sight. Think about it. Each, each wave that Jonah heard, he's in his well for three days, and he doesn't know that this well is going to bring him back. Like, I know I'm going ahead in the story, but he has no idea that this well is going to bring him back to where he's supposed to go to start going to Nineveh. He's, so he is inside this well. for the, Just think about the thoughts that he's going through in his head. Like every time he hears a every time he hears a wave, every time he hears a sound, think he's saying, "Jonah, you deserve this." I think he's saying this in his head. You deserve this. You he doesn't know what day is, like. There's no like the one if you've seen the uh, if you've seen the Disney version with Mickey Mouse. Have you seen that version? Like he has a light and like he like he like lights the match inside and like there's he's inside there's water and stuff. Like there was darkness, just darkness and guts and like like grossness. Inside, three days. Jonah's probably saying to himself, I deserve this. I deserve this. When am I going to die? Like, when is this going to be, like, the the acid that's coming over his skin, the smell, complete darkness, like this. For three days, Jonah is putting himself through this. For three days. In verse 5 and 6, describes this horrible plight. It says that Jonah, that he was at the root of the mountains, at the roots of a mountain, referring to the mountainous range in the deeps and the depths of the Mediterranean Sea. It says that Jonah, like we know from underwater mapping, that the largest mountains in the world are actually in the water, actually in, in the ocean, actually under seas. So Jonah's like, I am deep down, like the mountain peak, he's at the bottom of, he's at the lowest of the lowest of the low. And you ever been really low? Have you ever been to a place where you're like, I'm so deep down in depression. I'm so deep down in sorrow. I'm so deep down in debt. I'm so deep in broken relations. I'm so lonely. I am so hurt. This is where jo- Jonah's all of that. Deep down feels alone. He feels like I'm out of God's sight. I'm out of his favor. I'm out. It's a wrap. Though things could not seem worse, Jonah exercised hope in verse four. He says, yet I will look again towards the temple. Faith declares to approach God, knowing that we're sinful people, undeserving of his mercy. But faith drives us to look again. That word right there, yet I will look again. Even though I am down, even though I'm in the depths, even though I'm in the middle because of my sin, even though I am in a place that is full of darkness, I will look again to the holy temple. I will look to God. He's the only one who can rescue me. He's the only one who can save me from the depths that I am in. If God has has done nothing, think of it. If God has done nothing for Jonah, his fate would have been fulfilled. If God didn't intervene in Jonah's life, his fate would, he would have died. He would have, he would have, the story, we wouldn't have had a story. It would have been this guy who ran away and they threw him overboard and dead. Here rests the Jonah prophet in the middle of the sea. But God came in through the depths of this sin, as well as the water. Jonah prays this in verse 7. When my life was abating away, I remember you, Lord, and my prayers rose to you, to your holy temple. Jonah prayed, and he couldn't help it. You ever been there? You ever been to a place where you're like, in your life, your spiritual walk, where you're like, I'm done with God. I'm running away. I want nothing to do with him. I'm tired of trying to live this life as like this perfect standard. I'm trying. I'm done. I'm going away. And you find yourself in a situation, and what people do, they start to pray. They just start to pray. I, like, well, I thought you were running away from God. Yeah, I said that, but I need some help. And the only kind of help that can help me is that God kind of help. I've seen it. I've been there in my own walk. You may have been there too, where you feel like, I, this is not going to work. I'm done. I'm over it, and I get in the circumstance, I get in the situation, and my heart moves me to pray. The spirit within me is like, pray. Just start to pray. I've heard stories and testimonies. I've said this before. My my parents, my mom, we used to listen to Unshackled on the radio, old, old, old radio station. But these guys and these stories, they would be in the worst circumstances, and then all of a sudden they felt like, I just need to pray. 
I just need to pray. Sometimes, church, you just need to pray. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're in, just say, I just need to pray and pray and continue to pray. That's what Jonah says. I just, I just pray to you, and my prayer arose to you, to your holy temple. Church, continue to pray. At the valley, at the valley and the mountaintop, pray. Raise your voice to his holy temple. Here, like, here, I know that there's money in a bank. I know there's, money, there's a PNC bank up the street. That's where I belong to. There's money in that bank. That bank cannot make me rich. Even though I know there's money there. There's a ton of money there. There better be money there because I put my money in it. But I know there's a lot of money there. I could go to that bank, and that bank will not make me rich. I can go and say, I need this amount of money. We are trying to buy a house and we're praying that it goes through. Church will pray for our house that we're uh, trying to, just going to go through. But if I said, I need it, I need an extra 20, I need an extra 20, I need an extra 50, I have a hundred thousand dollars. I know they got it over there. They're not going to give it to me. It's not going to make me rich. Just because, you know, there's, there's a resource over there doesn't mean that it's going to help you. Because I know that there's a God that exists and that he is the source of everything. And he's the only thing that can pull me out of any situation I'm in. If I'm not physically, he can pull me out spiritually. If, if, not, if, not phys- if he can't give me the, the money I need, he can change my mind. He can change my heart. He can change my approach to it. It's only God that can come in and change what's wrong and what's going on in the inside. With the inside of me. So Jonah starts to pray, and he prays a prayer, and this prayer that he prayed that he's in the, pra- in, in the midst of praying is not an original prayer. There are some parts of it that are some, some, some songs, some, you know, some, 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 some psalms that David wrote or other authors wrote. So Jonah's mixing in his own prayer and some prayers from, from, the, the, book, from the book of Psalms. And why I encourage you to church is you don't have to be creative when you pray. You can pray a prayer that you've heard before. You know, you've heard this prayer before? Our Father who is in heaven, holy be thy name, thy kingdom come. Like, you can pray that. You can say, God, I, I don't know what to pray, but I've heard this prayed before, so I'm going to pray this. Sometimes when you're praying, you say, I don't know what to say. Let the Spirit guide you and let, let, let the Spirit bring the words and say, God, I, don't, I just, I, I need you. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I, your word says, I, just fulfill your word. Just fulfill your promise in me. Like, let me rest in you, God. You don't need to have this perfect prayer. Jonah's prayer is not perfect, yet he prays to God. He prays to God. It's, I've, I found this quote. It says that for every, every human sigh, for every human, <sighs> there's a psalm that was written about it. For every, like, <sighs> for every, like, gosh, there's, there's a psalm in the Bible that's written for it. You don't have, we just, sometimes we don't have to search for prayers. We can just get in his word and start reading and say, this is exactly how I feel. There's enemies after me. This is exactly how I feel. I feel like I'm in a miry pit. This is exactly how I feel that I just want to praise you, but I feel so lonely. I, there's so many Psalms that we can pray and, be, and say exactly where you are. Church, start praying some of these Psalms. Start, start reading them and saying, this is where I am, God. I, this, this is exactly how I feel, Lord. Lord, answer me. Hear my prayer. I'm praying this exact prayer too. So we may be sinking spiritually like Jonah was. But know this, yet God does not abandon us. You may be sinking in sin. You may be sinking in the depths. But know that God has not abandoned you. Jonah was thrown out of the boat, but not out of God's sight and not out of God's grace. You may feel like you have gone so far, but you're, you're not out of God's sight. You're not out of his grace. John 6, 37 says this, all those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me will, ne- will never drive, I will never drive away. To anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. John 10, 28, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. No one can ever take you out of God's grace. No one can take you out of God's sight. In Psalms 94, the David, the, the, author, the author, the writer says this. It's not going to be on the screen. It says, the Lord will not abandon his people. How dreadful that some people actually want to have nothing to do with God. To be a part of his, to be apart from God is hell, worse than anything we can ever imagine. To be apart from God is hell. Jonah felt that he was apart from God. And so those three days that he was in the belly of the well, belly of the fish, was hell. 
like nothing he could ever imagine. I've heard of terms like, oh, I'm going through hell right now. I'm like, mm, 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 no, no, you still got air conditioning. You ain't. You really ain't going through it. Like, what you're going through is hard. Like, I, I, I'm with you. Like, this is, but that term, hell, like, you're not going. Jonah was literally going through, like, darkness, hell. Like, I can't, to be separate from God is to go through hell. Verse 10. In verse 10, we, we, we see that we're, we're, we're about to get to Jonah transitioning, but Jonah feeling like he's separate from God. And this is the, when Jesus went through all the pain that Jesus went through, Jesus, that was not the pain that he felt. The, the worst pain he felt is when he had the separation from God. That, that, that moment where, where, where God is a, gave Jesus a sacrament, like you have to die, you have to go through this, you have to go through the grave, like all that, etern- that is separation from God, that is hell. And there's some people who say, sign me up for it. There's some people, I, I, when I worked in the fire service, and guys would say certain things, and they knew that was like, ooh, that was horrible to say. Like, you shouldn't say that. And they would say statements at the end of it, like, I'm going to hell for saying that. I'm like, why would you, why would you like, yeah, like, and sign me up for that. Like, I don't, do you understand the weight of being eternally separated from God? And you're like, yeah, sign me up. Probably going to hell for that one. I'm like, well, do you want to go to hell? I mean, I'm just saying that. No, honestly, do you want to go to hell? Holding, like, let's not get all spirit. Like, well, you brought up a spiritual thing. Hell, spirit. Like, okay. Look, I'm not, okay, I'm just saying. Like, you know who I am. If you don't want to go there, we can talk about it. Why would you ever want to go to hell? Like, I don't, but people say, sign me up for it. Eternal separation from God. And that's what Jonah felt. And that's what Jesus went through. And he went through it for what? For you. While we were yet sinning, Christ died for us. And we thank Jesus Christ for the sacrifice you made for us. So Jonah comes to the realization that, God, I will do your will. God, I will do whatever you ask me to do. God, I will bring salvation. Salvation comes through you and you alone. He starts to pray. And so Jonah is, is in this midst of prayer for three days, and then God sends this fish, and the fish obeys the will of the Lord and brings him to the shore. So we're in verse 10. So we're going to be moving into chapter 3. But we're in verse 10. It says that the fish obeyed and spewed Jonah up onto the beach, his, this partially digested prophet up onto the beach. And many scholars believe that Jonah was brought back to the place that he decided to run from, the, the place where he decided to j- get on board with, with these dudes and decided to go, uh, go away. Like he's going the opposite way. He's going to Tarshish. So I'm going to bring you exactly the same spot. So scholars believe that he went back to Joppa or Joppa, however you want to say it. And then God says this, uh, return to go, collect your $200, and go to Nineveh. Like, that's what God tells him. He says, now go and do what I called you to do. Go to Nineveh and give them my message. And now I like to believe that Jonah, when he does this, it's not like in the middle of night when no one's there. But I think God has a, I think he has a great sense of humor. Like, I don't think God sent them like at two in the morning, the beach is empty, no one there. I think he sent them right at rush hour, like noon, like or 10 o'clock before it got super hot. And here comes this fish, like, up on the shore, and it's doing like this thing. It's like working Jonah out, like doing this, and they bleh, and everyone was like, <gasps> like phones are coming out, and everyone's like recording, and like world star, and like everyone's like YouTube, like everybody is recording what's going on. Like I don't think God's being discreet about this at all. He's kind of like, okay, Jonah, here we go. Everybody's gonna know. Blah, here you go. And he probably smells. His skin's probably bleached, and his clothes are tattered and rattered, and it's just horrible. Like he smells bad. But everyone's like, did you just see that? Did that just happen? Like, and word starts to spread about, like, this man coming out of a fish. And, like, then the fish was like, peace. And, like, backed out and, like, went back swimming. Like, it was just gone. Like, I did my job. I'm out. He's going to find something else to eat. And Jonah's just, <laughs> just standing there. And the word of the Lord tells him, now go to Nineveh. And he has, like, s- stuff hanging off of him, seaweed and whatever else. Like, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what happens to this. But what's really cool is that the word that this man has been like, I think people come around him and looking at him and like, what's going on? And he's like, which way to Nineveh? And they're like, that way. And he's like, and he starts walking there. And I think the word of Jonah getting there beats him there. Like they're like, oh, and they start getting on Twitter and they get on, they get on Instagram. They just, they're just going away. And they're like, this dude just got thrown. He's going to Nineveh. Like, Nineveh, watch out. Here comes this guy. Like, he's a little crazy, but he's on his way. Like, I think the word of Jonah coming beats him to Nineveh. 
Like it just beats him there. Sometimes somebody might have a message from the Lord from you and it beats you to the place where you got to go. Like they're expecting you. Like they knew you were coming. Nineveh was expecting Jonah. They were expecting, and we're going to go a little bit later about how this plays into Jonah's story. How this plays in, but we're, we're going to start to land, land this plane when it comes to Jonah. So Jonah is now sent to go evangelize. This is the whole reason what he was supposed to do. He's supposed to go tell them and to warn them that God's wrath is coming and they are to repent. That's what, he's, what, that's what God told him to do. Evangelism is, is a program originated by God. Like evangelism is what God has placed to, upon men to go spread his word. Like we are to tell of God. We are to evangelize. We are to be the messengers of God. In light of human depravity and our inability to lift ourselves up from our own sinful condition, God takes the initiatives and opens the eyes of the blind and draws us to the cross. We are to go share his story. We are to tell people about his goodness, about his mercy, about his grace. If God did not intervene, we'd all be lost. If God had intervened in our life, we all would be lost. So in order to make the known, uh, known of the remedy of sin, God chooses us to share his story, to share the gospel, to share how good Jesus is, to say that there is a father in heaven, there's a perfect place, there's a heaven and a hell, and we are separated by that, from that because of our mess up, our own doing. But Jesus stepped into the middle of that so you can have an re- eternal relationship with God and not be separated from that. And he longs for you to, to be in a relationship with him. He longs for to be Lord over your life and to walk through life with you. Do you, do you understand that? Do you want to have a saving knowledge of who Jesus Christ is and to walk in that daily? And people say, yes. Say, God, pray that you just, just God, I give you my life. I give you my all. I give you everything. Be Lord of my life. I'm done running my own life. I want you to be, I want you to run my life. I want you to be the pilot and me to be the co-pilot. No, not me to be the pilot and you to be in the back passenger. And this is what the gospel, this is what Jonah is told to go do. So in chapter three, Jonah, God again tells him to go do this. Tells him to go share this, share this story of that. They're warning them that they need to come to repentance. And if I was God, I would have said, I'm going to find somebody else. I'm done with Jonah. I'm throwing him up and be like, now get out of here. Let me, let me go get Mike. Hey, yo, Mike, go tell them about it. Like, I would choose somebody else. Like, I, I, sometimes you, we get to a point where you're like, I'm just done with people. Anybody ever got done with people? Anybody ever like, I'm just done with them. I'm just over it. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use somebody else. Like, that's, thank God he never did that with me. Thank God he never, like, gave up on me and says, I'm done with Dion. I'm over him. I've told him, I don't know how many times to go and do or not to do or go and say or not to say or go and give or not to give, yet he does his own thing. I'm done with him. Thank you, God, for not giving up on me. Thank you, God, for not giving up on you. Thank you, God, for not giving up on Jonah. God chose Jonah. He basically told him, cowboy up, Jonah. It's time to go to Nineveh. It's time to do what I've called you to do. So in chapter 3, verse three, in verse 2, Nineveh is described here as important or is also literally a great city to God. And chapter 3, verse 2, is a great city. So go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I gave you. A great city. Why would God call it a great city? Us knowing that the Ninevites were horrible people for the atrocities of how they treated people during war. Why would he call it great? Like it should say, go to that horrible city, Nineveh. Go to that, like, horrible, detestable place, Nineveh, and proclaim the message I give you. But he calls it a great city. Why in the world would God call it a great city? For Jonah, he surely didn't call it a great city. He hated them. Like, that's where the Samaritans come from. The, the Ninevites interbreed it with the Jews, and then those, that's why they hate them so much. This horrible people, like, married the, the Jews that were still in the area and had the Samaritans. And so that's why Samaritans are hated the way they're hated because they're this mixed, hated group. Like you slept with the enemy. Like you made a family with the enemy. So Jonah's not calling this city a great city. He's calling it a horrible city. But God calls it a great city because of the number of people there that needed him. He calls it a great city because of the number of people that needed repentance, that needed salvation, 
It was a vast city. It took three days. It's, it's a city, and then it has three towns around it. It took three days for, for, for Jonah to get through the whole city to tell the message. Three days. Imagine Jonah approaching Nineveh. So Jonah is approaching Nineveh, so we, we don't need this anymore. i take this down. And this is, so Jonah is now approaching Nineveh. And he's been, he's been walking there for some time now. He's been trying to get there, and he's finally approaching it. And I think Jonah, as he's approaching it, he's like, how are these people going to treat me? How's this going to go? Like, they already know that I've been coming, and I'm that dude that got swallowed by a fish, and I still smell like fish, so I need some new clothes. And so Jonah finds some new clothes. Where's Jonah? Jonah. Come on, Jonah. There he is. All right, there's Jonah. He got some new clothes, right? And he's like, he's been walking. He's like, to do for days walking to Nineveh. He gets there. He's like, how are these people going to think about me? What, how are they going to treat me? How, what, like, are they, are they going to be mean to me? Are they going to be, are they going to be, are they going to try to kill me because I'm an outsider? Are they going to receive the message that I'm sending? Like, I don't care if they receive the message or not. I'm just going to do what God tells me to do. Like, I, he's been thinking and thinking, pondering. And sometimes we do that. God has called us to go and say something to somebody or go and do something, or to a calling or a certain place, and we start thinking, like, what, is, what are they going to say? The guy's like, go and tell your neighbors about me. Go and tell your coworkers about me. And you're like, well, what are they going to say? Like, are they going to like me? Are we not going to be friends anymore? Are we going to, and maybe it's somebody you don't like. Maybe it's somebody you have, like, this thing against, and, and you're, God is calling you and trying to get you to go and do, and you're like, well, what are they going to say? And what are my friends going to say? What are they going to say? About? Jonah was thinking about, he had to be, because this is Jonah. He's the prophet here. If you go to 2 Kings uh, 14, Jonah has this prophe- prophet- prophecy about, pro- about uh, prosperity, and it actually happens. And so everybody is looking at Jonah like, he's the dude, like, he's the man, like, he's great. He, he, we got all this prosperity. And Jonah said, if we do this, because God said we do it, he would, he would bless us, and God blessed them. So Jonah's like, he's like, Jonah is the man. He is the prophet we like. He's probably thinking, if I go there to Nineveh, they're going to. Not only, I don't know if they're going to kill me, the Ninevites, but my homeboys back at home, they're definitely going to say something. They're going to be like, Jonah, you did what? With, to who? You told them about God? Like, you dead to me, Jonah. So, like, don't even come back. You come back, we got stones loaded up. Like, we're ready to rock. Like, don't come back, Jonah. Because he, they hated them. They, you don't understand. They, like, Crips and Bloods, like, hated each other. Like, don't, we don't, we don't, I don't talk to you, we don't like each other. But Jonah now has to go because God, sometimes when God tells you to go, you're going you're gonna to lose some friends. You might have some people who aren't going to like you. You might have some people who say, man, this is, what are you doing? He's like, I got to do what God's called me to do. You're going to lose some relationships. You're going to lose some, some position with people because you're doing what God's called you to do. But we, we contemplate that. So that goes into our spirit. We're like, what, what's my neighbor going to say? What's my coworker going to say? What are my brother and sister, my parents going to say? What's my spouse going to say? What are my children going to say? And God says, don't worry about that. Go do what I told you to do. If I can bring a fish to protect you from you killing yourself, I can protect you against these other people. Go and do what I called you to do. Don't get lost in, in the self-doubt that I believe Jonah starts to go through. He has to go and tell God. He has to go and tell about Christ. So Jonah does this. And I think Jonah's kind of doing it half-heartedly. I don't think he really cares. Like he doesn't, he's like, I'm just going to do what God calls me to do. I'm just going to kind of do it. So he's walking the streets, and he's telling them, about it. He's like, all right, I'm going to go do it. So you got, got all these dudes, and Jonah is like telling them, not the well. And Jonah's telling them about, about God. So he's, he's telling them, and I don't think Jonah's like, hey, everybody, God loves you. He, 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 he just wants you to repentance. I think Jonah's like, y'all going to hell. All y'all. All y'all, going, all, all y'all going to hell. All y'all condemned. Y'all got 40 days, and it's a wrap. Like, it's over for y'all. Like, it's just, God says that you are going to be, God says, as the word says, that he, they're going overthrown or overtaken. You're going to be overtaken. For, you got 40 days. And I'm going to sit back, and I'm just going to watch. And Jonah goes this. I, I don't think he's this nice, kind prophet. I think he's, like, Bible thumping, like, y'all, like, it, it's over. It's a wrap for you. It's a wrap. God has said it. I am the mess. I'm the dude who got swallowed by the fish. And I'm like, that's the dude from Instagram. Yeah, that's me. You, like, y- y'all going to hell. Like, it's over. It's a wrap. 
40 days. You got 40 days, and it's over. I don't think Jonah really, he still didn't care about Nineveh. He was just, but he did what God told him to do. How many times we go do what God tells us to do, but we really ain't doing it in the right heart, in the right mind. We're not doing it in the right spirit. We can do that. We, Jonah is basically going through the motions. He's doing what God's telling him to do, but he's really not caring. In church, let us not be a church that's going through the motion, but not caring for people. Let us not be a family that, look, that's going through the motions, but we really don't care for people. We cannot be a church that doesn't reach out with hands and feet in our hearts. We have to be a church that reaches out with God's love, with his mercy, and his grace, with his patience. See, a church that does not reach out, it's a church that will die out. A church that won't reach out, it's a church that will die out. A family that won't reach out will die out. Let us not be that. If we only baptize our children, if we only baptize our families, we will lose sight of the, of, of the mission that God has sent us to, has sent us on to give people Christ, to preach this gospel, to preach about him. So we're going to wrap it with 40 days. You know, they, get, they have 40 days for repenting. This number 40 comes up in the Bible a couple times. If you, if you know anything about Bible history, the 40 days. We have 40 days where Noah and the ark was in the ark for 40 days. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. We have Israel that walked the wilderness for 40 years, being trained to live by the promises of God and his guidance. We have Jesus who, was, who fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and he was at, on this earth for 40 days after his resurrection to verify that he was both the messenger and his message, who Jesus was. These 40 days are significant throughout the Bible. But from verse 5 to verse 10, we see what happens. Jonah's going through the city, and I don't think he's saying it the right way. I don't think he's really, like, trying, but he's like, I'm doing what God told me to do. God can't tell me I didn't do it. He's doing what God told him to do. And in this, and in this, this city gets saved. Jonah, this dude, is responsible for one of the largest conversions at one time ever. 120,000, a minimum of 100. Some people, some scholars, like over a million people, but 120,000 people give their life to Christ because of Jonah. They all turn. Like the kings, he hears the message. He hears the message. He's like, basically, he's heard of Solomon and Gomorrah. I might be, he hears of Solomon. He's like, oh, that's the same God. Let us repent. Let no, nobody eat, nobody drink, nobody. Let's put on sackcloth and let us repent. And, and yet God, it's, it's, it says uh, in verse, let me find in my notes, in verse 9, that the king says this, who knows, who knows, after he hears the message, he says, who knows, God may yet relent with compassion and turn from his, his, his furnace anger so that we will not perish. Maybe God will. So let us, let us, let us fall at his feet. Let's ask for his grace and mercy, and maybe he won't. Maybe he won't. This is what's crazy. This is what's awesome. We end with this. Nineveh worship, the God they worship was a God, was a, was a fish God. And learning that Jonah was rescued by a great fish had a great impact on his words. The thing that Jonah was running from and then God used to turn him to make the deliverance is the very thing that elevated the words he had to say. They, they listened to him. If, if he never got swallowed by the fish, they may have never listened. He may have stoned him. They may have like, listened to him because the God says, I'm going to use what you were trying to do and, and you doing your own will. I'm going to use the circumstance to now be the thing that you stand on so people will hear your testimony. So people will hear the words that I have to say. The thing that in your life that you're most embarrassed about, that you're like, oh, gosh, that's horrible. God's like, no, 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 that's the platform we use for somebody to say, I can hear your story now because I've gone through this, because I relate to that. The thing that you're like, I can't tell anybody about that. Jonah doesn't want anybody to know he got swallowed by a whale, but he's like, you already seen it on Facebook. So uh, they're like, but no, 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 no. The guy that brought the fish, that's crazy. What do you have to do, Jonah? And Jonah's like, oh, really? And this is what Jonah, and then he gets beside God. He gets him between God, him and God get, get at odds because he doesn't like how God responds. But the very thing that you're embarrassed about can be the thing that God's going to use to bless somebody else. The very thing that you shy away from in your life is the very thing that God can use to impact someone else's story, to impact their eternity. The message of doom Jonah delivered is that people are sinful, 
and they're headed to hell. That's what, message, that's what Jonah told them. And that's God's justice. God is just in that. People who are sinful deserve hell. But God's love, which is implied in his warning, holds forgiveness to those who trust in him and turn from their wicked ways. Charles Spurgeon, I saw this quote. The author Charles Spurgeon, he says, if hell must be filled, let it not be possessed let it not possess one soul which was unprayed for, unimplored for, or unwarned. Let not, if, if there's going to be somebody who goes to hell, let it not be because I didn't pray for them. Let it not be because I didn't try. Let it not be because I didn't warn them. Let it, if someone has to go to hell, like God forbid, God doesn't want anyone to perish. He says that in, in 2 Peter, that he doesn't want to see anybody who longs for everybody to come to repentance. But if somebody has, if somebody does go, let it not be because I didn't do my part. Nineveh only need to hear the message once. To flee God's wrath, we must cling to his mercy. To flee his wrath, we are just to have hell. We are just to be separated from God. And Nineveh only needed to hear the message once, which is why Jesus said that those who he repeated, that repeatedly rejected Jesus, those that repeatedly rejected him, he says this in Matthew 12, you can read it on your own, that they will be rebuked by the citizens of Nineveh because they heard the message once, one time, and they turned and repented. And those who are, some of us who were unrepentant over and over and over, Eventually, if you get, repent and you get to heaven, none of us going to be like, bro, we had one shot. We had one shot within 40 days. That was it. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but let's get on mission. Let's preach the gospel. Let's live out what I've called you to live. He can use the message of deliverance, the message of warning to be the grace for somebody else. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your grace, and I thank you for your mercy. And I thank you for the story of Jonah and how it speaks to us, and we can get insight from it, God. But God, I feel like there's some of us, and we can, there's a little bit of Jonah in all of us. We can look at his story and say, ah, I can relate to that. I've done that, or I'm in that place. God, I ask that you would you would come and bring a word that you would come and, and you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and you would, for us to live out on mission what you've called us to be, to, to love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength, that we would do that, Lord, and that we would love our neighbor as ourselves, that we would love ourselves the way you called us to love ourselves, Lord, and so we can better love those around us, and that we would preach the gospel, that we would be disciples that make disciples, that we wouldn't just be a church that just does things, just do mission things, and that's great like every church do, but we will be a church, that we will be a family, that we will be a person that says, I live as a disciple who looks and yearns to make disciples. Now let us see that in the story how Jonah, even when he didn't want to do your will, he did it half-heartedly, he did it with not your heart, that you still come and say, it's my will be done. My grace, my mercy reigns true and supreme in our lives. And God, if there's someone in this room who has not made a decision to follow Christ, who has not made a decision to give their life to you, Lord, let your Holy Spirit fall. Lord, did you bring conviction? The Lord doesn't bring condemnation. He doesn't bring guilt. He brings conviction and say, you are far from me. And all I learn, yearn for is to be with you. Let us walk together. Let today be the day that someone decides, I give my, Christ, my life to Christ. I'm tired of living my own life. I want to live life God's life has for me. Let us be a church to say, let us do life together. Let us walk alongside you. Let us train you. Let's, let us develop you. Let's, let's help you become a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. And then go do that for someone else. And go do that for another person and another person. If there's anyone in this room who has not made a decision for Christ and want to make a decision or want to recommit their life to Christ, you decide within yourself, you just, God, take all of me. And I want all of you. 
I confess my sin. I confess my shortfalls. And God, I make you Lord of my life. I accept who Jesus is. I accept who you are. I accept that I'm a sinner. And I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. And I confess my sins unto you. I confess what I've done wrong, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to deliver me from my sins so that I might have eternal life with you through faith in Jesus Christ. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for this story. Continue to speak to us at this time of worship. That's all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.